one magnificent precious religious sister. I don't know where they found her. Six layman individuals, no? I don't know whether they were single or whether they felt the wives were not ready to come. Nine lay women whose husbands were not ready to come. Or, and 14 couples. So that means 43 lay person out of 257 or a whopping 16 percent! Yay! Yay! Well, that's a lot of progress in 50 years, no? I remember at the Vatican II, there was a handful of lay delegates. Just a handful. 50 years, we have made progress for the <laughs> Because they are all auditors, they cannot in <laughs> So as auditors, when you are invited, no? you cannot vote. You cannot stand up and speak directly. So what's, what's the purpose of your presence? Alright, let's see what's next. So, moving on from this, I'm not... Alright, sorry, just go back. Now, what's been positive? In my church in Malaysia, that was printed, a brief summary of the outline of the Synod, a little input and questions. And it was put in the Catholic papers and online. And there's a website address that if anybody wants to reply to this directly to Rome, they can do so. Now it seems small, but it's a major change in the church where lay people could give their comments directly. I remember meeting the Cardinal talking just in the conversation, we chatted about this, that was last year, and this cardinal told me, I don't agree with Pope Francis, it's real nonsense. How can he ask ordinary people, no? They can say whatever they want. That's not right. Just to tell you that life is not easy for Pope Francis, no? A simple thing like this, asking lay people to send in their comments on the website, on the internet, is also seen critically by bishops and priests. Why? We'll come to that, no? how laity are seen in the church. Now, in the Philippines, I know some dioceses have consultations, they talk, etc. But when you go to the website on the Synod, so far there's only three countries from Asia that are registered with participants. Uh, Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken, Philippines and one other country. So, this Synod, October, there will be more than 257 people. But only so far, 48 have been confirmed, the names. And the 48 confirmed, guess who are they? Wonderful, so clever. 40 bishops from, you know, only bishops have been confirmed so far. We don't know who will be the lay or religious. So, why this situation and what are we calling for? I think as Catholics, we, can, we have the right to ask for a greater participation of us lay people in the life of our church. Yeah? Greater complementarity. We complement each other as men, women, as persons, as bishops, priests, lay people, sisters. There's a need to develop this complementarity. Now, just to, well, sometimes it's, to, it's good to remind ourselves, you know, what the church has been teaching us, it's good to say it back to them. You know, instead of memorizing Bible quotations, try to memorize church quotations, that's very helpful. You know? I, I normally quote that when I speak with bishops. You know? in the, therefore, in Christ and in the church, there is no inequality. It's one of the Vatican II documents, Lumen Gentium on the church, right? number 12, number 32. So just remember that, there is no inequality. Is that true? Is that true in your experience? There is no inequality in the false. church? False. False. Only in the Philippines it's false. <laughs> the other <laughs> terrible bishops you have in. The rest of Asia, is it true? No. False. No. Pakistan also false. India? No. <laughs> of Asian bishops' conferences, 
talks of this right atmosphere. They said it's not the structures that's going to change things. In fact, they admit that in many parishes and dioceses, there is no real structures for participation of laity. If there is, it's a rubber stamp. No? It's a yes, Father. You just approve. You just sit in the meeting, you say yes, and you go ahead. No? So the bishops have acknowledged that way back in 1984. They've already started to acknowledge the gap between the vision and the reality. And they say what's most important is this atmosphere, a right atmosphere of communion, collegiality, co-responsibility. Communion, you understand, the spirit of mutual love, respect, listening, collegial, to reflect together, to work together, and that we are co-responsible for the church. I like what Pope Benedict said a number of times. You know? He said the lay people are not just collaborators to the priests or the bishops. That means we are not petticoat Christians. You know what's a petticoat? What the girls wear under a long skirt. You know? what? And the priest and the... We are not called to be petticoat Christians to hang around the priests and the bishops. We are co-responsible for the life and mission of the church. And coming from Pope Benedict. And he said it at least at four major events. Now, in other words, what does this whole thing mean? He simply says there is a culture of fear in the church. That most lay people do not dare to speak up. Why? We will not be invited for the next meeting or no? come. <laughs> I started being involved in my parish very young. And I used to attend programs in the diocese. I used to put up my hand and ask questions, simple questions. I was not, uh, it was not like Ravi protesting, no? I was just asking questions. But very soon I found that I'm not invited. <laughs> no? Until many years, and I didn't have the courage to speak up, no? to go and confront, being a young person. Until the Jubilee year, I remember picking up all my guts, all my courage, praying to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the bishop was there, it was a kind of Jubilee year retreat. And I went and told my bishop, Bishop, I want to talk to you. And he was kind enough, he said, yes, sit down. We sat and I told him, started to pour my heart, tell him, Bishop, I understand if I have done something wrong, you have every right to correct me. Or so does anybody as brothers and sisters. You know? But I don't understand, you know, the silent treatment keeping us away, it's painful. I feel I'm third class in the church, I have no place. And I started to cry. And my Archbishop hugged me and he started to cry. <laughs> and he said, Charles, you have to make a decision whether you want to please people or please God. I will never forget these words he has told me. And that is the motto in my life. Let me speak as a little voice of God wherever I am. But that brought reconciliation in my life. I found that, with, and then we talked, and he told me in, some, in, a, in a few words, no, that also he struggles with things in the church and with his own priests. That gave me, I started to feel that I am like a prodigal son who could come back home and find my place at the table of the father. Then I went on to work in Myanmar and that experience gave me a lot of confidence to meet and work with the bishops in Myanmar, which I never had before. So I want to come to this because I think in the seminaries there's a culture of fear. Everybody wants to be approved, passed, become a priest. In the Presbyterian there's a culture of fear among the priests that they are not rejected. Lay people have fear that they will not be ostracized and cast out. We all grow up in this culture of fear that finally we never work at our own issues. If you ask me why there is so much resistance in the church to change, it is because the priests feel insecure about their identity. And lay people feel insecure about our identity. 
we did, we, and it's something that the bishops wrote again in 1977 during this Asian Colloquium on Ministries for the Church in Hong Kong. They acknowledged that if we want to work towards this new vision of being church, they say, be prepared that it will provoke an identity crisis among the priests and we need to manage it. I think there's not enough of human formation being given in the seminary, that the seminarians are not allowed to mature as men. And in that sense, for me, the debate is not about homosexuality or heterosexuality, it's about maturity, human maturity. We all struggle with that, no? Whether I'm married, whether you're single, whether a homosexual orientation, we all have to struggle into maturity. For the priest, there is an identity crisis. They have been trained as little princes, and they come out, they have to build a church that is communion and participatory. Are you joking? <laughs> the model of training is to be a lone ranger, a superstar. The ministry is about community and participatory and dialoguing church. You must be a bit mad, no? The training doesn't fit the requirements of the ministry today. The model of seminary is 1,000 years old from trend. Well, 500 years. But still old. <laughs>